Well, are Zota cars actually that bad? Why am I making this video? Because the popular opinion is that Zota cars are indeed that bad, even worse <laughs> probably than most people think. And actually, like most stereotypes, in my opinion, there is a base of truth. So Zotac has made, in my opinion, I know it's not gonna do good for me saying this, but uh, honestly, they made some very, very bad cars. I've had a few that were absolutely terrible. I've had, for example, the RTX 3070 Ti Trinity. I've had that on the channel a while back when GPUs basically were impossible to get. And now that card had some issues. Thermal pads issues, Zotac basically remade it with different pads. It was just overheating and loud all the time. And also, aside from Mino 3D, is the manufacturer with the most fan problems that I've seen ever. It's not only Zotac's fault though, because we have to basically put things into perspective, okay? The RTX 3000 series from Zotac overall was pretty bad, the higher end models. The lower end model were actually very good, but we'll talk about it later. The reason why all those problems came out is mining, because at the time, everybody was mining, even during the summer, and that really stresses the card out. So basically, when pushed to the limit, these cards had issues. But if you were playing with them normally, they were fine. However, they had plasticky design, that made them too big to fit in most cases, and honestly, the cooling was just subpar. So even in gaming, if I had like an heavy RTX game, memory temperatures would go over 100 degrees. It's full of forums on Reddit of people trying to fix these cars with different thermal pads, even doing copper modding. I've done a lot. I've done copper modding, but honestly, better pads helped a lot, but they did not fix it fully. However, Zotec, had a pretty bad name even from before and I think that's completely wrong because actually the GTX 1000 series from Zotac was pretty good. The reason why it has a bad name is they make inexpensive GPUs but I think that's actually good for the market because sometimes you can you could buy at the time like a GTX 1070 from Zotac and it was much cheaper than like an Asus MSI equivalent especially a Gaming X at the time the classical true fans red and black one and of the Strix of course but Honestly, it was performing very close to the counterpart. So especially if you tweaked properly, if you undervolted it like we show on the channel, it was running very good. And one of my favorite cards actually from the GTX 1000 series is the GTX 980 Ti Amp Extreme from Zotac. I think that was a really good card. Which brings me to my next point. Zotac cards don't have bad PCB. Now, the PCB is basically the actual card because when you hold a card in your hand, you have basically the cooler and then you have the PCB. The PCB is where the circuits, the die, the memory is. It's all on the PCB, right? The engineering on the PCB is very packed into Zotac cars. Like they have small PCBs on newer cars and they're very full of components, but they're actually built pretty well. They don't have VRMs issues. The memory is not bad. Honestly, it's good. The problem has always been the coolers, but on the Amp Extreme on the GTX 1000 series, it was actually pretty good. And uh, on the 3000 series, it clearly was pretty bad, especially the Trinity. The Trinity was probably the worst card you could buy on the 3000 series RTX lineup, for real. However, their mid-range models were actually pretty good. For example, Zotac made the Twin Edge, a true fan card which also came in white that was actually very good. I've had one in my PC for a while and I've also had the RTX 3060 Ti Twin Edge which was very good. It was not overheating at all, it was not noisy, but honestly you would have been better off running it undervolted still. But that's just a problem with small RTX 3070s which it's a pretty power hungry card even though it doesn't have GDDR6X. Basically the common denominator is those cards have issues with memory memory temperatures. So if you have a GDDR6X card, like from the 3070 Ti and upwards, it would have had issues. And the 3070 Ti was the entry level, so it was the one with the smaller cooler, and so the one with the most problems. So don't ever buy an used RTX 3070 Ti Zotac, please, for your own sake and my sake, okay? All of that massive introduction brings me to today. So today, 2024, RTX 4000 with the super cards out as well. Are they bad? And the answer is no. I'm gonna just say it flat out, no suspense for you guys, I apologize. But I've tried a lot of the 4000 series cards from Zotac because especially the Super, like the one I have here today, they actually went pretty sold out at launch. Not really sold out, but it, they were tricky to find good prices. But uh, Zotac was one of the few brands that was full in stock. And so I have bought a few of these and they are very good. The Trinity model, which again, brings the name of the very bad 3000 series lineup, is actually great. What they have here is the white version, and I really like that Zotac took what they did on the Twin Edge 
which was making it white for cheap and did it here as well because honestly there aren't many good white cars now they're making more but back in the day we had the gigabyte arrow and we had the strix white which was super expensive and even more back in the day we basically only had the galax hall of fame in fully white as a proper white car and now if you're building a fully white build like the one we have back here which is on the channel by the way with this very unique lc power case you need a white gpu if you want to make it look good so honestly i think they're filling a hole in the market i like it and especially this rtx 4070 ti super i have here today I have a dedicated undervolting video, but even at stock, it's just running great. I run a fire strike, I'll show you the temperature results. In games, it's very cool, very quiet. I will show you now the graphs of a long fire strike run. And as you can see, it's running like cold. And this is with the stock fan curve, not even with a tweaked fan curve. I have tutorials for that, but that's not the point. So all in all, it's a great card. And again, this card has 16 gigabytes of VRAM. So we're not talking about an entry level card. We're talking about a proper card with a lot of VRAM and a lot of heat to cool. And it's running well. The packaging, of course, is nice. They give you a GPU standoff as well, and I like it. They also have a pretty decent software for the RGB control, where you can also overclock everything like in MS Afterburner. Even though on the website, uh, it's basically telling me that this website uh, is not safe, which, um, yeah, maybe it's not the best, but uh, the software works and there is no actual virus. So software compartment is good. So in 2024, is Zotac bad? No, you can buy it easily i haven't tried a 4090 maybe if you buy a 4090 you know like i'm not saying you should buy like an asus rog streak matrix three thousand dollar graphic card like the one we've had on the channel but i'm saying maybe get the top of the line zodak model okay if you know what i'm saying but uh, for those cars like 4080 etc they're very good and i do 100 recommend them but i also do recommend you avoid used 3000 series Zota cards. Avoid them, please. Unless you buy them for very cheap and you are willing to put in a lot of work. Or if you're gonna water cool it, again, PCB is pretty good. So this is my conclusion for today's video. Do let me know if you found it interesting. And please, if you had a Zota card, do let me know your experience down below in the comments. I think if you guys comment what you've seen with those cards, it helps a lot to the video, more than I can give to you. And uh, hopefully drop a like and a follow, and hopefully we'll see you guys in the next video as well. Have a good day. Bye.